presentation will be held on October 14th at 4 p.m. We are asking each auxiliary to give $25 and each member to give $20. The church anniversary will be climaxing on November 18th. We are asking each member to give an assessment of $25. You can turn those into Deacon Martin and Mother Martin or Sister Jones. Do we have any visitors? If so, please stand. State your name and church affiliation if you have one. This concludes our announcements. <laughs> have a great new Sunday. <laughs>
today's subject matter take heed to the instruction. Take heed to the instructions. Amen. Amen. Those that have been in the Bible or known parts of the Bible for a long period of time as we have been residing on God's green earth that we have studied the Bible and learned scripture and we all, a lot of us that have been in church for quite some time knows the story of Jonah. Some was taught as a little child and some was taught as a young adult and I believe all adults are young, amen. You know, I don't consider nobody to be old, you know, amen. All of us are young. Some of us are just a little older than others, but we all are still young. Amen. According to God's eyes. But everybody, a lot of people are familiar with the story of Jonah. Jonah is basically given a task, a message, a, a instruction, therefore, to go to a wicked city called Nineveh. To preach and to proclaim the gospel, to bring the people into some type of restoration, wherefore, they can have a chance and, and be saved and, and be delivered from their ways. But like Jonah, like some of us, we tend to hear the instructions that God gives us and, and tend to hear the things that God has designed for us to do and the plan that he has placed together and has knitted together. And sometimes it's difficult for us to do the things that we should do. My first point is, don't take God's grace, don't take God's favor for granted. Many times people take God's favor for granted, and they use grace as a green card to sin. And a lot of times you have to be careful with that, because sooner or later God will turn a deaf ear. He, he, the Bible says you will call upon him and he will not answer. So that's why it's important that we, we try our best. And, we try to press towards the mark, as Paul would say, and do all we can from within what we can to do the very best that's pleasing to God. And a lot of times people, and, and they come to church Sunday after Sunday, or they listen to tape after tape and preacher after preacher, but yet and still God has given you specific instructions on the inside of you. He has placed these instructions Therefore, we can be the disciples that we are, which is a learner, and be the children of God, which we are, since we are saved by God, and we have confessed God, and then believe, confess Christ as our Lord and Savior. But here is Jonah on a Pacific journey. God is asking him just to go minister to one city. And many times, God asks us certain things, and, and we don't necessarily take heed to it. God may tell you to put 50 in the offering, but you put 10. But then wonder why the blessing haven't came yet, or wonder why this haven't came into fruition yet, or wonder why the prayer haven't been answered yet, because a lot of times, if we learn just to heed to the voice of God, the instructions of God, then things will pan out a little bit better. And then we won't have to rely on the next president. Hello, someone. Come on, somebody. We won't have to put all our faith in the next president or the next prince or king or whoever that's over charge of worldly affairs. See, I know who I'm voting for. I mean, you know who you voting for. But at the same time, don't let all your faith just be in Romney or Obama. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Many times, so many people now, they, they got their faith wrapped up in the next president or the next candidate or, or the next boss on the job or the next whoever or however. But we have to learn to still trust in God in spite of who get in the White House because some of us have forgot that when the, when the ten plagues came in the book of Exodus, the Bible said that when the plagues came, the children of Israel did not have to partake in any of it. So while the flowers was going on, and while all the boys, the, the boys and the frogs, and all the other plagues was going on on the other side, the Bible said if you can look over, you can see that the children of Israel did not have none of that going on when they were. So in other words, God will sustain you in a famine and whatever may be going on in this world. 
God still take care of his people in spite of who be in the White House, whether Republican or Democratic. If you trust in God, you got faith in God, I ain't worrying about who the next president is because my God shall supply all of my needs according to his wisdom. I'm not saying it doesn't matter to vote. You should vote yeah. if you have a right to vote. But don't don't just get hung up on people. See, so many people get comfortable on people and people making decisions. See, they may make one or two decisions that's in your favor, but they may make some other decisions that's not in your favor that's going to hurt you down the line. Yeah. Being faithful for a true believer of God is not an option. See, when God instructs you, when God tells you to do something, just do it. See, a lot of times, and that's what we struggle with, with doing what God tells us to do, like coming to church, for instance. Some people struggle with coming to church, but don't struggle with clocking in. They say, but a job paying me. So what if God didn't wake you up this morning? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What if he allowed you to miss the alarm clock and, and miss everything else? What if he allowed the star to go out on the car and, and you forgot to put gas in it and he turned you over to the reprobate mind? See, that's why I, I, I trust in God. I believe in God. God is my source, not my resource. Most battles go on life, they'll fall in the mind first. See, most things that you wrestle with, you wrestle with in your mind first. Especially major decisions like this one. See, Jonah didn't want to go tell those people about the goodness of God. He didn't want to go tell those people the things they was doing and, and try to bring their relationship back with God and get things straight over there in Nineveh. And sometimes God may tell you to go witness to somebody or to go oh, talk to somebody that somebody may be doing something wrong, but he know you have that, that heart that you can go over with a tender heart and tell them about the goodness of Jesus and tell them about the lifestyle they're living in is wrong. But some of us, we're scared to address certain people unless they're in certain classes or, or certain Magnificent, but you better learn how to talk to kings and princes and say, Prince, that is wrong. I don't care who you is, I don't care how much money you got, you is wrong, what you're doing is wrong, and if you don't be careful, sooner or later when you die and be faced to Jesus for judgment, you may he may say, Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. The reason being is because you just like the rich man in the Bible, you did not want to do what you were supposed to do. So right now you gotta face eternal damnation. So we can't be afraid to witness to certain people. I don't care if they got more, more zeros in their bank account that'll give you a headache. You better learn how to come on somebody, help me hold the go. You better learn how to talk to whoever, however, whatever. If God said go talk to this one, talk to that one. It don't matter about the bank account, baby. They just need Jesus. folk need Jesus too. Especially they're making a lot of your decisions. You better pray for them. Let's read Jonah 1-3. Amen. Jonah 1-3. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa and he found a ship going to Tarsha. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarsha from the presence of the Lord. He paid. He paid to go into the opposite direction where he was supposed to. He paid the fare. See, some things we paid for in life. Some of the debt we're dealing with, we paid for it. Because mm -hmm. your credit went always a 400. <laughs> no. Because most of us got credit cards at 18 and 19 and 17. That's when we started getting the credit of the letters in the mail, if you remember back that far, to those that got a little more age. But you start getting the credit card offers in the mail. And your credit wasn't always where it's at now. You didn't always have a whole bunch of stuff on your credit. Most of us started out with blank credit unless mama put a phone in our name at two. Yeah, they do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do that. Yeah, five years, you know, he had a car in the house. He didn't know. Yeah. And he tried to buy a house. 